There are not many British bricklayers who go on to become one of Europe's biggest money launderers. This man is expected of rinsing a staggering £300,000 a day for a notorious organised crime gang, who you definitely have heard about. Navigating his way around Europe, making enemies of the Russians and hoodwinking celebrities to legitimise his public image, this is the story of Johnny Francis Morrissey. Johnny Francis Morrissey was born in Manchester in December 1961. Although not much is documented about his upbringing or family life, it's fair to say academia wasn't really his thing. He left school at 15, turning his hand to bricklaying and working as a security doorman in Rochdale, a small town situated in northeast of Manchester. He is believed to have left England behind in the early 90s, moving to Kinsale in County Cork, Ireland, where he owned a fancy top-end restaurant on the waterfront called Annalise. Considering such humble beginnings, you won't believe what happens next. Morrissey was given the name Johnny Cash in Ireland after spending €600,000 in cash to renovate his newly acquired restaurant. Not many former bricklayers or security guards can claim to have €600,000 casually laying around in their pocket, so it's not crazy to speculate that his life of crime began long before he rocked up in Ireland. Rumour has it that, back in England, Morrissey had the reputation of a highly dangerous and violent man. There were even whisperings of his role as a notorious assassin and hitman, connected to 38 murders. Whatever the truth of his suspected criminal beginnings back in Ireland, his lavish spending and bravado backfired as it drew the attention of the Provisional Irish Republican Army, also known as the IRA. Not afraid of armed conflicts, kidnappings, assassinations and extortion, the IRA was a paramilitary organisation fighting for Irish independence from British rule. It's suspected that Morrissey gave tens of thousands of euros to the IRA in protection money, money willingly given in exchange for the safety of him and his property. Other sources suggest Morrissey was negotiating with Russian gangs, exchanging designer goods for large amounts of cocaine. This cocaine was believed to have been shipped across the Arctic and Atlantic Oceans, eventually smuggled into Ireland via County Clare and distributed across the rest of the UK. Given Ireland's location and looser restrictions, it was becoming a hotbed of organised crime in Europe. This led Irish authorities to set up the Criminal Assets Bureau in 1996, also known as the CAB. An independent body with additional powers to identify and investigate suspected criminals. The Criminal Assets Bureau went straight for Morrissey and quickly organised a series of raids on his property. One of their first hauls in County Cork led to the discovery of a handgun, over half a kilogram of cocaine, which was believed to be worth $140 per gram in Ireland in the early 90s, multiple Cartier watches and shed loads of cash. Not happy with the threat to his livelihood, it's believed that Morrissey took aim at the chief legal officer at the Criminal Assets Bureau at the time, Barry Galvin, and hired an assassin to kill him. Thankfully, that attempt was foiled by the quick-witted authorities. You can imagine that, if the police keep raiding your houses, you might need a change of scenery, and fairly quickly. Knowing the spotlight was on him, in the late 90s, the disgraced restaurant owner quickly fled. First, he fled to Russia, although his former clients weren't too happy to see him as they proceeded to break his arms and legs as a consequence of missed payments. Eventually, Morrissey settled in Malaga in Spain. Perhaps he learned from his mistakes, as he kept a low profile and very little was known about his movements in the early millennium. However, this changed in 2009, after a rather unusual move brought Morrissey's name swimming back to the surface. This time, he was listed as a co-founder of theratbook.com, a subscription-based website designed to expose local criminals. Although only active for a short time, the website asked, do you want to find the rats in your neighborhood? See if there are serious criminals, rogue traders, pesky perverts around you, then this is the site for you. This is quite an unusual move, don't you think? Coming from a person that was investigated by the Criminal Assets Bureau and allegedly affiliated with Russian gangs, was Morrissey trying to showcase a change in conscience? Was this a front for money laundering as leaked emails? Or was this a covert way to try and find local criminals he could recruit into his notorious gang? You tell me. Although it's not known when their relationship began, at this point, Morrissey was known as a strong ally of Daniel Kinahan, the leader of the Kinahan Gang. Believed to have been set up in Ireland in the 90s by Daniel's father, Christy Kinahan Sr., 
the Kinahan Gang continues to be one of the largest organized crime groups in the world. The gang has an estimated 1 billion euros to their name. US officials currently offer a 3.8 million pound reward for information leading to the arrest of each of its main leaders, Christopher Kinahan Sr., Daniel Kinahan, and Christopher Kinahan Jr. These are three of the seven names on the notorious wanted criminals list. I've made a video about the Kinahan gang, so if you want to know more about them, check out the video. I'll link it in the description. It looks like Morrissey quickly climbed up the ranks of the gang and soon became their most successful money launderer, responsible for a whopping £170 million in just 18 months. That's around £300,000 a day. But how did Morrissey achieve this staggering feat? Well, the gang operated over a long period of time, building a complex network of different businesses around the world and using them as a front for money laundering. One of the ways this was achieved was through Hawala, a traditional and informal system of money transfer originating in the Middle East. Hawala operates outside of the conventional banking system, making it quick, discreet, and difficult to audit and regulate. It works like this. A sender gives money to a local Hawala broker, who contacts a broker in the recipient's area to facilitate payment, often using a secret password. The recipient receives the funds from their local broker, minus a small fee, and the transaction is complete. Although Hawala has many legitimate uses, it is widely known as a technique that helps facilitate money laundering, which has therefore prompted different governments to try and shut down these sorts of operations. Back to John Morrissey, who had married Nicola Morrissey in a five-star lavish wedding at Dundas Castle in Glasgow. The power couple, now living in the Costa del Sol in Spain, were notorious on the party scene, flashing the cash at affluent parties and befriending celebrities and influencers alike. His wife Nicola was the owner of Nero Drinks Company, a vodka producing business formed in Glasgow in 2018. Within this business, charismatic Johnny had the role of brand ambassador. They famously called upon unwitting celebrities to help market and promote the legitimacy of their brand. Photos are rife on the internet of the couple posing with famous celebrities, including the actor Will Meller, professional chef Stephen Saunders, and Mark Wright and Michelle Keegan. Other celebrities, including Keith Lemon, can be seen posing with the vodka bottle. Nero even sponsored the Marbella Film Festival, the Scottish football club Hamilton Academical, and many exclusive bars and celebrity pool parties across Spain. Amazingly, in April 2022, the US Treasury shone a spotlight on the Kinahans and published a list of all the businesses thought to be associated with the gang. Nero Drinks was amongst them. It was believed that Morrissey had given large shares in the business to Daniel Kinahan as compensation for a previously seized drug shipment. In a brash article entitled At Home with Nicola Morrissey, published in ELM magazine, Nicola's son, Sean, described her as kind, hardworking, and beautiful. Not words you'd associate with a woman networking in organized crime. A further video of Nicola attending a football sponsorship event shows a sweet, smiling, endearingly nervous woman, begging the question of how much she knew about her husband's operations. Was she the innocent victim of a gang-led business acquisition? Was she even aware that her husband had traded shares of business with a wanted criminal? Was her involvement coerced through fear? Nevertheless, Morrissey's lavish lifestyle was about to come to an end. The publication of the report by the US Treasury tightened the screws on the Morrissey couple, and once again, their lavish spending and bravado drew attention. How was it that the couple could flaunt the cash and sponsor huge events when, looking into the company's financial statements, Nero Drinks was struggling to make a profit? The eventual investigation was triggered by Spanish police, who seized 200 kilograms of cocaine and recovered half a million euros in cash, which was found cleverly hidden in vehicles around Spain. A number of raids took place in properties associated with Nero Drinks, including properties in Malaga and other cities in the Costa del Sol, as well as properties back home in County Cork, Glasgow, and Rochdale. Not long before his arrest, videos of Morrissey surfaced of him bragging about his shooting skills and showing off how to conceal guns. His clear bravado probably started his downfall as the screws tightened and the search for his whereabouts began. Well, his bravado ended in September 2022, when not only the Spanish police, but also the Irish Guardia, Britain's National Crime Agency, and even the DEA of the United States closed ranks together to stage his arrest. An infrared helicopter camera caught the moments where police infiltrated Morrissey's Malaga home at dawn, smashing down the gates and entering his property. An arrest video shows a topless Morrissey apprehended and surrounded at gunpoint, 
Led away by police, Morrissey's smile quickly turned into a grimace as his arrogance slid away and the possibility of spending the rest of his life in prison finally dawned on him. His wife Nicola was also arrested at the scene, escorted from the property giving a middle finger as her parting words. However, it didn't take long before she was released on bail and is currently fighting to save Nero drinks from dissolution. Her husband Johnny, on the other hand, is still in the high security Al Jaurin del Torre prison in Spain. It's believed it could be two years until he stands trial for his suspected crimes. Well, that's if the Americans don't extradite him and get to him first. At the age of 62, if found guilty, it's likely John will spend the rest of his life in prison. The rest of the Kinahan gang are believed to still be active, hiding somewhere in the United Arab Emirates. But as comes as no surprise, the gang must have taken a huge blow now that their lead enforcer and chief moneymaker has been arrested. £300,000 a day is quite the sum of money to lose. Large bounties still linger over the gang's leaders' heads and they must be looking on nervously about what is to come. To have reached his criminal heights, Johnny clearly has street smarts, buckets of charisma, and is politically adept. What secrets might he reveal about the Kinahans in exchange for his precious freedom? So what do you think Johnny's fate will be? And when will the Kinahan gang ever meet their downfall? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to see what you think. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, it immensely helps the channel. Thank you, and see you in the next one.